Our next guest is Ty Roberts, co-founder, chief strategy officer of GraceNote. Ty, welcome. Hey, thanks a lot, glad to be here. So, could you give us a little bit more, I mean, you've got an incredible background of what you've done before GraceNote, can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, I started out as a video game writer when I was a kid. Basically, I wrote video games for Atari and for uh, other game platforms. And I ended up being the guy that did the sound side of the video games. Uh, after a while, I didn't do the games anymore, I did the sound. That turned into CD-ROMs and multimedia. When digital video came about, I started working on multimedia albums. And so I worked with David Bowie and Brian Eno and Todd Rundgren and Soundgarden and a whole bunch of musicians to kind of come up with the idea of what the multimedia record album would be. And then this thing called the internet came along and we decided that we would create a database of music information and so that morphed into the CDDB database which is what started GraceNote. The uh, database itself was used in the first music products because you took your CD and put it into a computer and then you ripped your CD kind of onto the hard drive and the only reason that that works is because of our database telling you the names of the songs. And so that really got the whole thing off to a start. Since then that database has gone into cars, we've then gone into mobile phones, we then became part of Sony for a while, we got into television, we got into television guides, television schedules, now sports. So um, we're the largest company for metadata and information in the world right now. Wow, that is impressive. So when we talk about the internet of things, it sounds like everything you do really applies to, especially around the music industry, the internet of things. Could you care to elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure, the whole idea really is that, that everything needs to have identifiers and needs to be linked together. So it's all about relating one thing to another. This movie has these actors in it and it takes place in this location and this, the plot line is about this thing and this thing in that scene is a shoe and that shoe is made by this company and those are all gonna be trackable by numbers and so so in the future, as you watch or consume media, as you listen to things, you're going to be able to find out everything about it, but you're also going to find out everything that's related to it, how it was created, and why it was created. And so that's a, that's a really big deal. So how does that translate then for benefits from consumers? Is it just truly around understanding the data or is there more to it? No, it really lets you have a much richer experience, especially for like music artists are really a, a reflection of the world that they're in. So they write songs about their life or about things that they see happening. And so without your ability to understand where they live or what they do or what they look like, you're missing a huge part of what most music artists are about. It's not just their sound. In fact, some music artists, their life is more than their sound. And so the reality is knowing about that. The same is true for actors. Yes, you know about Angelo J Jolie and Brad Pitt, but if you didn't know anything about their personal life, you'd be missing a huge amount of everything about them. And so the reality is the, the overall person and the other things that they're doing and what they say and where they go and who they interact with, that's as important to appreciating media as the actual just little piece of uh, thing you're listening to right then at that second. So does that play into then really entertainment personalization or how yes. does that fit in? Okay, so that's the next part, which is there's too much media. So, and searching is not really like, it's great if you know what you want already, but sometimes you don't know what you want. Just give me something that I might like. And it's kind of like when you go to the you know video store and someone would recommend a movie to you, a friend at a dinner party does. So personalization is really the key to automatic enjoyment and also broadening your perspective because the personalization engine, if it's done right, will actually pick something for you that you didn't know that you should watch or you didn't know that you should listen to. And that's when you grow or learn about something new. So could you elaborate for us auto content um, recognition and how that plays in? Okay, so in these TVs that are running around the room here, you can see basically live broadcast televisions running on those. Inside the TV, there's audio fingerprinting running and video fingerprinting. And the TV doesn't really know what it's connected to. The TV's just a display. It can be connected to a cable box or a Blu-ray disc or a Roku box. but because of this fingerprinting stuff that's running in there, it doesn't matter what the source is, it still goes, oh, this is the movie Titanic. Oh no, you're watching uh, Anthony Bourdain and he's in Spain. And the ability for then that device to know that, and then that device can connect to the other things that are out there and say, oh, Anthony Bourdain in Spain, here's a video about Parma hams. Here's a video about you know uh, travel in the Spanish uh, uh, mountains. And, and so the, the idea really is, bringing the world to the thing that you're watching. And that's what these, this new automatic content recognition enables. So I imagine big data is a huge component to bringing all of this together. Right. Um, and, and how does analytics start to play into how do we mine all that data to take that value? Well, the, the, so the, first of all, there's amazing new information. It was never before. There was information on Nielsen about what you watched maybe on, in a fairly small set of households, right? right. 
Now we have a millions of television sets, and it's not only what you're watching, it's what you tuned from to watch the thing you're watching, and when you tuned out, and what you tuned to. Like you went from the local news, because you didn't like the sports segment, and you went into Anthony Bourdain, and then Anthony Bourdain got a little boring, and you went from Anthony Bourdain to the Food Network and watched the Cupcake Show. So that says something about that consumer. You're really seeing their actual tastes and what they're really interested in. Has they kind of surf both the over the top and the broadcast world, and so that uh, whole, uh, I'll call it media consumption profile, and maybe even what music they listen to, really and really starts to get you uh, very close to like being able to then create this personalized service. The analytics is huge. It's going to help advertisers figure out who they really want to reach. It's going to help advertisers figure out, you know, when they actually have an ad, whether or not the person acted upon it. Like that kind of stuff is going to be really possible in the future, and it'll change the whole business. The whole business is changing already. So with that, how is Grace Note going to continue to evolve as you go forward? So we want to be providing, first of all, the basic information for all the different things you're looking at, which we're doing a pretty good job of right now. And then on top of that, these kind of revolutionary services where we basically help the TVs understand what they're watching, help figure out who's in the room, help figure out what you're doing when you're driving, and we're in the unique place to link them all together because we've got the home, the car, the portable, and we're kind of Switzerland, so all of the different players that are in the ecosystem work with us. So we're in a good, good, great place to be able to put together some kind of you know, aggregate view of things where an individual company, you know, Comcast, will only really know what's going on in Comcast. Apple only really knows what's going on in Apple, you know, and so, but we see it all. And so I think we have to make it worthwhile for our partners to let us do that, but, but we already know that that can be done. For example, Apple used the CDDB database in its music product, but let all the other music companies use the database as well, because they felt overall it would be better for everyone. So that story has to play out in the big data world, but I think it will. Well, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Is there anything else you would like to add for our viewers? Um, just enjoy CES. It's one of the greatest shows in the world. So, you know, love being here. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir.